Do you still doubt the testimony and life of Jesus? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Have you ever wondered why much of tropical Central Africa has not been converted to grasslands for the breeding of cattle? African trypanosomiasis is an infectious disease of humans and animals. Protozoan parasites of the genus Trypanosoma live and multiply in blood and tissue fluids of their mammals and are transmitted by the bite of infected cheche flies. In wild animals, these parasites cause relatively mild infections, while in domestic animals, they cause a severe, often fatal disease. All domestic animals can be affected and the symptoms are fever, listlessness, emaciation, hair loss, discharge from the eyes, edema, anemia, and paralysis. As the illness progresses, the animals weaken more and more and eventually become unfit for work. In humans, the symptoms of this disease are fever, headaches, joint pains, and itching. The second or late stage of the disease, also known as the neurological phase, is characterized by the presence of the parasites in the cerebrospinal fluid. In general, this is when the typical signs of the disease occur. Confusion, disturbed sleep pattern, sensory disturbances, extreme lethargy, poor condition, and coma. If left untreated, sleeping sickness patients die within months when infected. A missionary told the story of the dreadful scourge of sleeping sickness that struck a certain section of Africa several decades ago. This sickness was caused by the bites of the cheche fly, which lives in the dark, dense forests. Many natives succumbed. The Belgian government sent in a remedy for the sickness. Missionaries were supplied with it and went in all directions into the villages to inoculate the natives. At their approach, however, many of the natives in the faraway villages would scamper away. They were afraid of the white man and his needle. The sure remedy for their sickness had been provided, but they refused it. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus refers to John as speaking of the truth. These were the same words Jesus spoke in front of Pilate. I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice from John 18.37. Jesus and John the Baptist both testified to the truth. They bore witness to God, the truth. But while John is compared to a shining lamp, testifying to the light of the world, Jesus speaks of himself as the light of the world. We are all John the Baptists through our words and actions that testify to the truth that God is real. When the Jews demanded from Jesus proof of two or three witnesses in accordance with scriptures that he was truly the Messiah they were waiting for, Jesus came up with four. First was John the Baptist, revered by the Jews as a prophet. He spoke of Jesus as the Lamb of God and the Holy One whose path he prepared for. Second was the miracles of Jesus itself that was as powerful as any evidence that God is for real and He is God made man for our sake. Third, in Jesus' baptism and at the transfiguration, God Himself spoke of His beloved Son and when God spoke to the crowd, including non-believers. Fourth, the books of the Old Testament, prompted by God's Spirit, spoke of Jesus' coming as the divine Savior and King. Yet the Jews and us continue to doubt. Why? Today's Gospel cites three reasons. First is our preoccupation with human glory and praise. We are blinded by our human success, our wealth, our position, and status into believing that all these came only from our human efforts. We forget to be grateful and attribute everything to God and His goodness and generosity. Second is our lack of love for God. It needs a lot of faith to love God whom we cannot see. But loving God is manifested in our love for each other. 1 John 4, 20-21 tells us, If anyone says, I love God but hates his brother, he is a liar. For whoever does not love a brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. This is the commandment we have from him. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. Third is our prejudicial view of scriptural texts. When it is convenient for us to cite the Bible, we do. Yet when we are uncomfortable with what it says, we ignore it conveniently. One of our common pitfalls is our lack of forgiveness of others. Another is sin itself. We continue to be hounded by our addictions, 
our fears and insecurities, our greed and lust for the pleasurable at the expense of others. Our lack of faith today is pandemic in its proportions. And speaking of the deadly Cheche fly, I recall the Tagalog word Che, which is a slang that means stop bugging around. Indeed, when the bug of blindness to sin bites us, we must be inoculated with the vaccine of truth to make us see again. We must not refuse, for without an injection of faith, this blindness can be fatal. We can only reflect the light of God's love and truth if we become like John, who sees clearly like a lamp that is alight and shining in wisdom, words, and our ways. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant me the grace to grow in the freedom to speak your truth and witness to the risen Christ through my life testimony. Erase my doubts and deepen my faith that you are God, my Father, my Savior. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.